um, Dale is on and um, he's going to help participate and facilitate and make sure I don't go off the rails too much. So um, first of all, I do want to thank you uh, very much. You've always been, anytime we've asked for a meeting or, you know, to come and talk to us at our legislative days, you've always been really receptive and, and I appreciate that. And I hope we can count on you moving forward because this industry, um, I think you know, has been certainly disproportionately hurt, um, you know, retail, small business, hospitality in the state of New Jersey. And we are gonna need your assistance as well as, you know, every member of the legislative legislature as well as the governor's office. Um, you know, just to start off with a couple statistics, just so you know, so on March 13th, 85% of all hospitality workers were laid off in the state. And that's a big number because we are the private, the, the largest private sector employer. Um, so the goal is to get everybody else of unemployment, get them back work, working, and that makes financial sense for the state of New Jersey. Um, 60, 65 to 70% of restaurants um, are still closed. Um, some are doing takeout and delivery. Some are doing it real well. Some are kind of limping along and, and mostly they're doing it to keep the back of house staff working. Currently, it's anticipated that between eight and 10% of the small restaurants will not reopen, even after all this, as of today. Every week that it goes on, um, that number will rise. And if we're looking at the end of May, that number might be somewhere about between 15 and 18%. Now, we understand, and many of our um, people that are on have the same concerns about the safety of their employees, safety of their guests and, and safety for themselves so that we all want to do it right um which is why we have re we have uh wrote four reopen plans which we've submitted to all of you as well as the governor's office on safe stay for our lodging industry safe dining for our restaurant industry safe celebration for the lodging i'm sorry for the venue wedding and banquet um venues and then um safe uh play which was for our amusement parks and attractions and what we tried to do in these open plans is to really be credible and to really look at what we could do to minimize uh, when we do reopen any kind of spread to ensure that we are doing the best we can with sanitation practices and you know other than the healthcare industry nobody knows sanitation um, and adheres to it as great as we do so I, I ask you to look at those. Um, you know, again, the struggle will be because I think many of you know that PPP uh, is not a solution for the restaurant industry. The concept was great and, and we can appreciate why they did what they did. But for us in this industry, uh, it's just not working because it is really difficult to get people to start coming back to work. Um, you know, a lot of employees are scared and now with schools being closed, you know, parents are not going to be able to come back. And with, you know, the enhanced federal unemployment, which was needed. Um, but, you know, so now they're, they're going to be a little bit more slower to return. So these are just some of the initial struggles that we have. And, you know, just wanted to talk with you today about some initiatives, some of the current legislation we have before us that's, or before you, and things that we can do in the future. Um, so that's kind of my opening statement. Did you have anything before I get into kind of our little agenda here that you wanted to say? Mary Lou, I, there's no, qu no question, this industry is probably, the hospitality industry is probably the most challenged. It's gonna have the hardest time coming back. And, and you know, we get it. You know, if you have a restaurant that seats 100 people and you only know, can have 25 in, that, that restaurant's not gonna work. That business model doesn't work. Every, you know, you have all these unique you know, every one of your companies is businesses is unique, but we got to find ways to help you guys come back. Uh, myself, Senator Orho, uh, Sarlo, and others are real. Uh, we we need to start pressing the administration to start opening things up again in a safe way. We're not we're not talking crazy stuff. What we're talking about, you know, do the CDC guidelines, do the social distancing, but. Uh, NJBIA did a survey. They said 70% of their companies could come back. Well, we should let them back. You know, the doing what we're doing, uh, look, we want to protect people's lives. That's, that's most important. 
We had a huge failure in the nursing homes. That's crystal clear. And, and uh, but this economy can't be shut down like this much longer because I would think the percentage of businesses coming back will be not coming back will be much higher. And that, and that's the tragedy for all the hard work that people have gone through to build a business. And you know, you know, people think my dad owned a bar, so I know the business a little bit. You know, you know, and uh, he named it Nitwits, and someone said, "Where'd you come up with the name?" He said, "I have four sons." But, but um, so I know how tough the business is, and we want to be able to help you however we can to get you get, get is up and running, and having people have the confidence to come back into your places again. So uh, I, it's, it's not lost on us in the legislature. It's convincing the governor that, hey, listen, we don't want any cases. But we got to deal with realities. There's going to be cases, but let's limit it safely as we can. Because without the economy going on, there's going to be people going hungry, and uh, there's going to be a food drive next week for all the workers in the casinos, you know, because you know people are struggling so poorly. So, uh, we we really truly understand what you're going through, and want to get you back up and running as quickly as possible, as long as we can do it safely. Yeah, and, and I hope you got the plans and, um, you know, was well received by the governor's office. Uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to look at it because we did really try to make this credible, not just, oh, okay, we're going to put a few, you know, um, sanitation, uh, you know, like put some masks out there and, and hand sanitizer. No, this was an in-depth, comprehensive plan. Um, just going back to some of the current legislation and, you know, I, I, a big issue and you know, I kind of think I know your answer, but I, I need to address this because it's huge concern is business interruption insurance. Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, Assemblyman Freeman had inter in, introduced the assembly bill. Um, you know, any thoughts on, you know, we're hearing that they're looking at a federal fix, you know, any thoughts on that? Well, I'm trying to figure out how we can afford it, Mary Lou. You know what I mean? This is, I think this really is it, it's one of those things that the feds really need to deal with. Us, it, it just I don't know how how it's going to work otherwise you know you know you know what I'm saying it's just how can we how can it really possibly work I mean the reality of it is we're not against it we just haven't been able to figure out how we can make it work well I and mean, Mary Lou yeah and Mary Lou this is us Steve, the other Steve and Oroho and quite frankly the issue with the business uh, interruption insurance and whatnot, and it goes right to the Senate President's point about, and your point of getting businesses open, because obviously, the you know the, everybody's been interrupted already. There's no doubt about it, and there and people are, are are suffering. That's one of the reasons why the sooner we get, um, and thank you very much for your plans, because I also know that you've been uh, working real hard with the whole coalition that uh, the Senate President mentioned with the uh, business and industry, the 80, 80 uh, member coalition. Um, those plans, all those plans have to get on the governor's desk. And I know Senator Sweeney and myself, um, just last week we put out a, uh, with Senator Sarlo and Senator Ruiz and Senator Singleton about opening up uh, responsibly some, some of the businesses. And then we also have to continue, you know, to con uh, continue doing that. I know the governor had said that, um, you know, it really didn't influence him, but I, I think it did. <laughs> and quite frankly, um, as the Senate president said, every day that goes by, and you said it yourself, there's there's another small businesses that's not going to open, yeah. and the hole just gets deeper and deeper. So um, I think those plans, those four plans that you did, are are, are excellent. And I'm certainly hopeful that the um, when you mentioned that you did get a response from the governor's office. And what and what and what did they say? Did you, they give you any kind of timeline? Did they say how it might work into their in, in, into their plan? Well, they thought that they the word I got was it's very credible and um, certainly that they they think that would work. So. Well, then if then if that's the case, they should tell you to open up. Agreed. <laughs> you, know, you know, Mary Lou, a couple of things. My father always used to have a saying: "Don't piss down my neck and tell me it's raining." If you guys submitted a good plan, then they should take, they should act on it. Down in Cape May, Cape May business community and government leaders came up with a very good plan to open up. And Atlanta County is doing the same thing right now. And we should be looking at the plans and approving the plans 
and getting this place up and back up on Memorial Day. Because the longer you wait, unlike Tom Bracken, anybody that knows Tom Bracken saying it's okay to wait, I've never heard a chamber person say that. It's not okay to wait. If you're shut down, it's not okay to be stuck shut down when you can't, when everyone else is working around you. You know, if you have a card store and you sell bags and trinkets, you can't be open, but you can go into Walmart or Target and buy those same, those same things. Exactly you, can go, you, you can buy, if you have a boutique clothing store or a clothing store, you can't be open. But I can go into Walmart and Target because they got a grocery store, you know, buy that stuff. You know, I, I'm a believer that our business community and the people of New Jersey, look, when we opened up the parks and golf courses, it was a success. I believe that we can do this right, we can do it smart, and we can do it safe. And I'm not saying flip the switch tomorrow, but I look, we were late in shutting the government down. You'll see that Monday morning quarterback, and it's easy to Monday morning quarterback. West Coast closed down earlier, and the West Coast is coming up quicker. We were late getting shut down, but my biggest fear is late getting open. That's the biggest concern is being last to open back up again because we're never going to be at zero. We're never going to be at zero with this. No. But if we had done a better job with our nursing homes and realized the state of New Jersey is very culpable, culpable for the nursing home problem because our Medicaid reimbursement is like 49th in the country. So we're not funding those facilities the way, way we should. Yeah. And, and this happened. You know, you'd have half the number of deaths. You know, I people wouldn't be, you know, they'd be concerned, but not as concerned. Yeah. But. No, I, I mean, the, and I think, like I said, we're we're in a position because we're so good with sanitation that, that we can take this step. There is some bills I, I just like for you to, um, you know, consider and hopefully we'll be moving them forward. Um, the um, delivery allowing uh, pre-mixed cocktails. Uh, yeah. I believe Assemblywoman um, DiMazio and, and Senator Gopal and, uh, or is it Chelly? They all have that bill. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay, great. Um, the third party delivery companies, you know, the necessary evil that unfortunately those that are open need these third party deliveries, but the outrageous fees of what they're doing, like 45% that they're taking from the restaurant. And then they're switching the phone numbers out. So now no longer will the restaurant phone number be on there, but Grubhub's number will be on there. And I'm trying to cap that. Senator Gopal has a bill to cap those fees. Yes. It's, and I, I, all I can tell you is I support that bill. Yeah, it's I can't um, speak for anyone else. Twenty-four thirty-seven. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get that moving because, again, that's taking a huge chunk of money out of the restaurants that are trying to do the thing. Yeah, it's 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 insult to injury. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's the. Again, Senator Gopal, and I don't, you know, know if he's on it. Shout out! He's been always so accessible to me, and and I appreciate him as well as, as the rest of you. But the hospitality loan program, um, you know, this we, you know, it's not a lot. It's, um, you know, it's five million dollars. But for a small little, you know, independent restaurant, this could have a, a big impact because PP isn't working, and. You know, again, we're looking for any kind of funding or tax credits. You know, moving forward, that will certainly help oh, you're the best. small business owner. Well, like I said, it's it. it you know, it, the problem is five million dollars for the whole state. Yeah. You, know, you know, Mary Lou is is. I'm not against it. I think you know the administration is weighing against doing any bills that have appropriations to them. But it doesn't mean we're not going to try to advance them because we, 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 we need, wherever we can help, we need the help. And we're going to do our best to help. And, you know, a lot of the bills that Governor vetoed the other day were bipartisan bills that were passed unanimously in the Senate and you know, the Assembly. So I think we all know we need to help. And, and like I said, the, the thing that breaks my heart is the person that's worked to build a business that because of this pandemic is not going to be back open. And and I, and Mary Lou, just so you know, I do know uh, tomorrow we ha uh, have a set of budget appropriations uh, meeting and meeting, and that bill is on the agenda for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, also, uh, on a bipartisan basis, we've also been asking 
and uh, from the governor's office that they actually do have a lot of flexibility with the existing money that they have right now, um, that they could, that they could uh, take some of the you know, CARES Act money and put it into uh, a much more vibrant, much larger EDA program. I know a number of uh, associations have, have, have said that. Uh, they can also use that money uh, also to get out to some of our municipalities and counties, the one that have had lots of expenses with respect to, you know, PPE and, and testing sites and whatnot. So there is a lot of flexibility that, that the governor does have to use that. And one of the things he could use it for is to help prime the pump for our, you know, our, particularly our small businesses that kind of got pushed out of the way for whether the PPP program or the first um, $10 million that I guess got chewed up probably within 10 minutes on, uh, with the EDA. Yeah, you know, there's another thought here. And, and again, I, I don't know how it will go with the administration, but you know, the, the hotel lodging tax generates over a hundred million dollars for the state of New Jersey. And this is an industry, this is a tax by a very small portion of our industry. And, you know, tourism promotion is about, I don't know, it's, I think $16 million. You know, anything that we can do to, to reinvest some of that back into the hospitality industry, you know, is great. Um, you know, I know that there's some bills being considered on some tax credits, um, you know, extending that to the hospitality industry. That's where we're going to need your help because, you know, I understand that the state and the financial situation, the state budget, but what can you do, you know, whether through tax credits or whether through different programs, reduce regulations, you know, helping to advance. For example, I, I petitioned the ABC to allow, um, you know, liquor licenses. So a restaurant could use their parking lot since they're going to have reduced capacity to set up tables outside. And can we get liquor license expansion? And, and that kind of out of the box thinking that, you know, all the people on this call plus the 18,000 other um, members, you know, are, are really going to need that kind of um, kind of support and, and and some of that work. So if there's in your work with the reopening committee, um, you know, we're certainly going to advance some ideas to you. And uh, I just hope, you know, we can count on you to be receptive to that. Yeah, I th also, uh, yes, we'll, we'll be very, where we can help, where it makes sense, we will absolutely do it. And, and, and you know, Mary Lou, a lot of the businesses, like a lot of these ideas that we come up with might, might not work for some of these businesses, but at least give you a chance to come up with ideas to, to see if you can function. And I also want to let you know that Senator Cruz Perez is on the call too. Okay, uh, thank you, Senator. Um, so Dale, I mean, is there anything, because I'm sure I forgot something, so what did I forget? I think we just wanted to bring to your attention uh, Senator, the uh, I, I guess there's some some bills that are being talked about, and in fact have been introduced to expand paid sick leave. Um, I think Senator Weinberg has put put a bill in there that uh, you know um, it would be difficult during this time to, to expand. It would, very, it would be very challenging, Dale. I, I I understand the intent is well meaning, but that's something that we would really have to take a long hard look at. Okay. And the other, the other thing that actually I haven't seen anything on, but I know that the Senate had a, a long debate on uh, health care or liability uh, uh, exclusions for health care workers. I think just looking down the road, uh, you have to look at a, a number of employer, employer class because when, when people start going back to work, especially those that are dealing with the public, um, I could certainly envision enterprising lawyers uh, wanting to uh, develop a class of employees that uh, contracted the virus and uh, suing their employer. So I'm not sure it's just going to be regulated, relegated to the healthcare community. I think, unfortunately, we're going to see that, I think, down the road. And that certainly concerns us in the restaurant industry. Well, we'll, we'll look at that, Dale, as we go forward. The big, the, look, the good news is we're going through committee process again, even if it's like doing right now on this call. Because uh, when we did the last the last bill, to give immunity to healthcare providers, we actually made some mistakes in it uh, because we were rushing and not going through the process. So by going through committee processes again, you know, it'll give us a chance to have these conversations as we start to open things up, Dale. Okay. 
And one bill that I know you and I spoke about, uh, and I, I don't think it's moving anytime soon, but you know, looking in the future because it's going to take this industry a long time to recover. And things like the uh, predictive scheduling bill, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, that just needs to stay off the table for a while. And well, it's it's not it's not realistic. It was it was the challenge prior. And now, under what we're dealing with, it's absolutely not realistic to even consider. Yeah. Okay. That's that's great. And and I think that that's the important thing is that this is you know after Sandy and that was my first day with um, the association was Hurricane Sandy and I thought that was an uphill battle and how and we have restaurants that just never came back from that so we know this is going to be you know a, a three to five year and you know. And I know I got some of my large chain, um, chain, chain members on the call, so they're not going to like this comment. But you know, a majority of of our of restaurants in New Jersey are small independents, mm -hmm. and we're you know ethnically diverse, culturally diverse. That's what makes up the great makeup of the dining experience in New Jersey. And they're the ones that are not going to be able to come back from this. And, you know, um, but you got small franchisees that, you know, just because they're a, a Dunkin' Donuts on, on the label, you know, or on the, on the sign, they're a small operator. They're a one or two right. operator. So, um, again, thinking the legislative agenda moving forward, uh, obviously, you know, just if, if we could keep that in mind. And I know we got questions here, but Senator Orho, did you have a comment? Uh, no, I was just taking a look at uh, the plans that uh, had been had been sent. Just taking a look to see if there was uh, if you looked at a uh, a percentage or or a a distance. I actually see in your plans it's actually actually both. Either I think it says either in stage two, either fifty percent or six feet. And I was uh, just talking with uh, some of the, the outdoor. I could not agree more with obviously the ability for uh, outdoor. Yeah. So when we, when we did this plan, um, it was interesting because we asked the members to go back and look at their dining room who were on our task force right. and it was different segments of the industry. And for example, some, you know, that social distancing of tables worked well. And for others, it was reduced capacity. Because every restaurant is so different, we figured we needed to allow them to figure what worked yep. best for them right. and their yeah. guidelines. And, and Mary Lou also, Senator Ruiz, Tressa Ruiz is one also. Oh, thank you, Senator. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I was on the on the audio call. I was having some technical difficulties, but I, I jumped in now. Oh, I like the hat. Thanks. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to just go through. I know we have some questions uh, that that um, people had submitted ahead of time, which we sent to you. But I know that I'm seeing um, Marilyn. I, I know you raised your hand. Marilyn uh, Schlossback is the uh, this year's chair of the association. She has Langosta Lounge in Asbury Park. Um, Marilyn, do you want to take yourself off to chat off mute? Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for coming and doing this with us. Uh, Senator, I've been listening to your comments about the importance of a speedy moving forward and just to reify any of us that are shut down are losing on average 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a day at this time of year with the season approaching. I'm on the boardwalk and all of my venues are on the coast, so this is my ramp up time. Um, I know that this is a federal issue, but this PPP issue is a big one. A lot of people have been approved for it, including myself. And if we, in some way from a state level, can put pressure on our national legislators to move the terms to an eight week period after you reopen, that solves a huge income problem for us. If we can offset our labor and use those funds to pay vendors and deferred mortgages and rents that are gonna pop up in July, we might have some capital without borrowing additional funding. You know, I'm, Senator Sweeney, you were very um, important to me when I reopened after Sandy. We did a press conference together and um, you were one of the few legislators that I was able to connect with to push my needs out there into the, 
the local government because I'm still paying loans from Sandy. And to start borrowing more money, not knowing when and if I can open and when I open, what my capacity will be. Um, we're having huge issues with rents in my area and I'm sure in other areas of the state where landlords are not being cooperative with reduced rents. So any of us that are paying base rents are now put into a very high percentage. And I know the governor has done a lot with residential rentals, but nothing's really being done on the commercial side. And, you know, if I could open in two weeks from now, I can't because my rent will be 48% of my revenue at a 50% reduction. So if there's anything on a state level we can do to talk about commercial rents, um, that's one issue that we're having. Well, Senator, um, I know Senator Panaccio, I th I'm pretty sure Senator Panaccio has a bill talking about that, Marilyn, um, that we're looking at. I think there is a bill similar to that that we're looking at. You know, partially though, you know, some of these bills we're passing, I think could be challenged in court, to be perfectly honest with you. I think there's, uh, the court might be sympathetic to us right now, but some of the stuff that we're passing, we're a little concerned, could be challenged in court. Um, Mayor, uh, I see you have a, Mayor Shedda, he's on our board. Mayor, I see you have your hand raised. Did you have a question? Senator. Thank you for uh, everything you're doing to help the, you know, not only the restaurants, but the hotel and motel community as well and tourism in the state. Um, one of my questions surrounds uh, future development plans we had for our portfolio and permit extension act and, you know, potential COA relief to prompt um, to either promote development in the short term within the state and a lot of our permits uh, for many developers take, you know, a number of years in the state and, you know, allowing some additional time as banks and, you know, lenders work through some of their challenges as well during this period. Well, we, we are doing a Permanent Extension Act bill. I think we'll be voting on it, hopefully on the 14th. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's up in the Budget Committee. It is. Uh, on, for uh, whenever, Thursday when we do the Budget Committee. And, um, and listen, I have other... Besides just me, I have other colleagues. So any of my colleagues that want to jump in on any of this, please jump yeah, that's in. A, Senator Sarlo, this is Senator Orho. Senator Sarlo has the uh, permit extension bill up tomorrow for the uh, Senate budget and appropriations. It's, I believe that was for a six month period though. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. It, I don't know. Realistically, I don't know, given that we've been in this for a month or two already and you know, how much longer this may go and then working through the cycles with lenders and whatnot, if six months will be adequate, if we can look at maybe a little potential longer time frame, if it's, you know, 12 months or so. Well, Mayor, you know, when we're doing stuff like this, it's kind of, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure all the way around not to do it. So if we need to extend it longer as we, as we move forward, we won't hesitate to do that. Okay. You know I'm saying, but like we take step by step with this thing. We see that we see that you know the projects are not getting there. Then we'll absolutely you know look to extend even further. Because I think I, I think it's to Senator, uh, Senator Sweeney's point. I think this may be the uh, third or fourth extension of the uh, 2008 Permanent Extension Act. Um, just going for a couple more questions that we have that were submitted um, from Tom. Many restaurant owners found it difficult, if not impossible, to pay first quarter sales tax as per normal schedule. Are there any plans to offer a scheduled repayment catch-up plan? Um, please keep in mind that the renewal of liquor license is tied to obtaining a tax clearance, which without a plan may be out of reach for some despite the moving of the renewal date to September. Well, you know, we have an idea, and at this point, I don't know if we pass or not, but it was to, uh, you know, give the small business community uh, the ability to hold on to the sales tax for, you know, a quarter. You know, give, give them some cash flow, you know, for now. You know, our sales tax is nowhere to be seen right now to start with. So if our small businesses would be able to hold on to it to keep them afloat, I was all in favor of that. 
I, I don't recall off the top of my head if we passed it, but we do have that. We do have a bill like that, Mary Lou, that, you know, we are looking at because we, we, we got to try to help however we can. That's, that's great. No, thank you. Um, one of the questions, and, and I don't know if this is a question for you or, but uh, a lot of the people are, uh, members are asking because there's limited, like down in Salem County where you are, or, you know, there's not. So is there going to, are they looking at maybe an, a phased in reopen or is it going to be an all or nothing kind of thing? Well, the governor has the final say, and right now he's saying all or nothing. And, you know, we are one state, but we're really three different regions. And thank God for where I'm at, I'm knocking on wood. Even though the numbers are going up, it's nothing like what others have seen in the state. Uh, I would like the administration to look at opening up Atlantic City. I'd like to see them open up areas, as long as we can do it in a safe way. Nothing is going to happen overnight, Mary Lou. That's why, like I said, the fact that you submitted plans and they said they're promising, what we really need to do is say, well, what they like and what they don't like. And if you, if you can live by these rules, then start planning your openings. You know, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> I'm not sick. <laughs> but, but my point is we really need to – I, I trust the business – community that you, you no one knows your business more than you do you know the person knows the business no one knows it more than they do so if i give you guidance whether it's cdc and some things on top of it and you can operate your business that way then you should be allowed to operate your business yeah. you know because we're just we're just keeping why is it okay for me to have food stores open burger kings open why is it okay for me to go to a starbucks you know what i mean but i can't open anything else up there's risks in everything we take, Mary Lou. The goal is to make sure we do all the safety precautions that we possibly can do. There was a report today that New Jersey, more than any other state in the country, is adhering to the masks. You know what I mean? Going out where other people are saying, like, Ohio had to cancel the order. They said people won't do it. Or our people, are, we, we can follow rules real well. And so let the business community know what the – you know the rules of the of the road are, uh, and and let you guys start evaluating if it makes sense for you to open up or not. And, and that's why we went with the reduced capacity because number one, two challenges: we have a supply chain issue. For those of you who don't know, there's a huge meat store uh, shortage. So you know, I've talked to Cisco and U.S. Foods and Performance. Restaurants are not going to be able to open up at full capacity because of that, and getting employees back. Um, and and just to reiterate because the other two senators that came on, you know, schools being closed, where, you know, that, that's going to create a problem. Um, so, you know, part of it is, is the notification. And I've encouraged the governor's office to please at least give us, you know, 10 days notice that I can tell my members, okay, we are looking at maybe a reduced capacity for Memorial Day weekend. Um, and because there's going to be a major problem here. I live at the shore in Monmouth County and, you know, the beaches and boardwalks are busy. There's going to be no place for people to eat, no place for people to go to the bathroom. I mean, we're, we could end up in a, you know, in an emergency situation if we have an influx of people and no place for them to go. Well, Mary, the, that's the point of common sense here. You know, like my brother lives at Spring Lake. He said the boardwalk was closed, but the street along Spring Lake was like a was like the boardwalk. You know what I mean? People are going out. People are going to move. You know, they they want to get moving again. And but you know, to do social distancing, we actually need the boardwalks. We need the streets. We need the beaches. You know, I mean, we need it all. And we also uh, obviously uh, this is Oregon. We have the uh, you know, as the Senate President said, uh, the regional approach. We do have different regions within the state. And we also have obviously our border states are doing things by region now already. Uh, and I think the governor, you know, uh, office needs to recognize that. I think Delaware is opening up a number of things in Delaware. Obviously New York, even Governor Cuomo mentioned the fact that there's going to be a regional approach in, in New York. And then I think we have um, Governor Newsom out in California. I think opening up uh, their, their restaurants and stuff, I believe, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to Senator Orho's point, 
where I live in the southwestern part of the state, elective surgeries are allowed in Philadelphia, but we're furloughing doctors. We got, we have, you know, we have, uh, we're furloughing doctors and nurses. Um, I border Delaware, it's 20 minutes from where I live. People will be going over there to get their haircuts. They'll be going over there to buy products. You know, you know this, this, this regional plan that was put in place, not that regional because every state's doing their own thing. And, you know, we gotta get, we gotta get in the game. Murray Lou, car sales. We should be able, we should be, I know we're about restaurants, but why can't we allow car sales? It's a huge tax generator for us. And it's parking lots. They're big parking lots. The places are open to get your card serviced. So let people sell by appointment. What we're saying is there are so many industries that can open up right now. And because we're not open-minded to those things, um, you know, we're just saying, no, we're going to keep everything shut down. And at some point, somewhere along the line, you have to open up. When we open up, the longer it takes, the more damage that's going to be done. Hey, and, Senate President, when, yeah. if I can just jump in, because I have to, I have to cut off to get on a pre-budget yeah. meeting. Yeah. So I just want to th thank you, Mary Lou, for the invitation, and to all of you. Um, I I echo some of the sentiments that the Senate President has indicated. Just from a, a little bit of a different perspective, I just want to be sure. I know a lot of you have been in this business for a long time and probably are keenly aware of what you need to do. Whatever frameworks we create, and if I can be of help to you, that we help those that perhaps don't have um, uh, access to the English language as readily as, as, as other people, that we really create an equitable framework that any small business can tap into in a way that's going to help them open up at the same time. Some are more savvy than others. Some are bigger than others. But I'm, I'm interested in making sure that we create frameworks that help our businesses open up unilaterally in a, in a most equitable way. And if I could be of help in that area, you can count me in. Yeah. Senator so Lee, thank you, everyone. And I apologize that I have to jump off. I just want to just respond because that's the concern is the culturally diverse, unique restaurant experience we have in New Jersey. They're the ones that are going to, you know, that this is going to impact because it is hard for them to stay closed. And we don't want to lose the great, you know, right vietnamese mexican you know spanish um african all these kind of great restaurants they're the ones that are going to have a, a harder struggle so thank you for that thank I you everybody thank you senate president thanks uh thanks, senator Orho. Thanks. thanks assemblyman i see you there in the corner um so kirk rua from the turning point um i know kirk you uh you have a question for the senate president and then i have one a couple more and then we'll let you guys go all right, thank you, Mary Lou. Uh, thank you, Senate President, uh, for uh, taking the time here. Uh, one of our concerns here, and when you look at our industry, specifically restaurants, um, you, when you drill down into what is really hurting in the sector, it's, it's actually full service restaurants where we have servers and, and we have dining rooms closed. Typically, the QSR, quick serve, they're still doing well. Popeyes reported 20% earnings uh, increases in Q1. So, my question is, you know, we have an upcoming minimum wage hike that is due uh, January 1st, and it's a dollar not only for our back of house workers, but it's a dollar an hour for our front of house workers. And how most restaurateurs have been dealing with this minimum wage tax hike is it comes out on price. We're just going to have to raise our prices to offset this minimum wage hike. Is there any discussion on just putting a freeze on the minimum wage uh, uh, hike uh, that are going to be in place on January 1st? You know, there hasn't been any, well, it's not true. There has been discussion uh, from some legislators. Uh, that'll, that'll be reviewed as we, as we start coming back, Chris. We have to look and see what we can and can't do and what makes sense and what doesn't. You know, we're going to do, I don't do, I don't say post-mortem. I don't like hearing post-mortem. We're going to do a post-op after this thing, and, and, and as issues pop up, we're going to deal with them. Um, here's a question. Will New Jersey clarify that PPP forgiveness will be non-taxable for state income tax purposes as it is for the federal income taxes? Well, I, 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 this first time I heard this, Steve, Bill. 
That's something that, um, quite frankly, the first time I heard it as well, because that question did come up locally, um, dealing with, obviously, the uh, Division of Taxation. It would be our recommendation, obviously, if it's a, if it's a grant, that it would be a non, uh, you know, non-taxable. Yeah, but this first time we heard it. And, and, and Mary Lou, when, when you ask me tax issues, I call Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So in the future, I'll know. And I know that um, Pat Morlando had a question about um, unemployment ratings. Uh, is that question going to be asked? So I'm looking, Pat, um, um, I apologize, but I'm sure they're talking about probably the workman's comp, and then is this going to affect the, um, the ratings? Probably, um, probably the ratings for unemployment. Yeah, this is Mary Lou. We actually constitutionally restricted the rating of the unemployment fund back in 2009. So we built up a surplus because um, last time in 2008, we had to borrow a whole bunch of money from the federal government. And that increased everyone's costs in unemployment. You know, the employer employee shares, you know, we, you know, it's a schedule. They just kept going up on the schedule. We finally got it down to a good place. So, you know, hopefully we don't exhaust the unemployment fund, but with you, when you look at these numbers, we don't start putting people back to work and opening up businesses sooner. Uh, I would think it was going to absolutely have a problem where we'll wind up having to borrow money again. And when you borrow money, you got to pay interest on it. You know, hopefully we get people. The point is to get people back working again. That is, that's absolutely the, the, the first point that we got to do. The, the, the sooner we get people back working, the less of an issue we have with almost all these, almost all the questions. Um, now, with respect to the rating for each employer, with because they have had to lay people off, um, that's obviously something I um, hadn't, hadn't, hadn't even thought about because they're the more more time to lay somebody off or uh, hire um, unemployed for your employees, your unemployment tax as an employer goes up. That's something we should take a look at to say that, hey, listen, it was because COVID-19 related during this period that it doesn't affect an employer's, um, you know, uh, unemployment uh, rating negatively. That's something we should probably take a look at. Okay, great. Thank you. And, you know, Mary Lou, I, I would think uh, as other states are opening, that, um, you know, it's just like any industry, you'll get the experiences, what worked, what didn't work, you know, how people could make make a couple bucks with the social distancing. You know, so I'll be curious to see. Well, I have the pleasure this year. Um, I don't know how I should do, got the short show. So I'm the president of the Council of State Restaurant Associations across the country. Uh, so this is my year. and. It, it is interesting to see we've gotten the plans from you know all the different states um, and uh, you know there there are some some good things you know to be quite honest with you in Georgia I was talking to my counterpart down there and they opened I guess it was last Friday uh, and there was only two people in the restaurant you know so I, I do think there's going to be some concerns of people going back in um, so the, you know the reduced capacity and, and moving things forward in a slow responsible fashion will create that consumer confidence and that's going to be part of what our initiative is is creating that consumer confidence that it is safe to go back in into a restaurant or stay at a hotel or go to the beach or go to the amusement park uh, or go to a wedding you know our um, our wedding and banquet venues uh, we have a group of them and they're they're really concerned because what does a two or 300 person wedding look like moving forward? I mean, this is wedding and wedding season and they're severely impacted. Okay. Uh, Mary Lou, my, my son actually lives in, in uh, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And quite frankly, um, I was talking to him just about uh, how many people were at the restaurants. He, and he noticed the same thing. Obviously they, they, they still got their, uh, you know, takeout curbside delivery. Um, but that, that idea of the confidence, and that's why the, the sooner we get going, because we do know that the businesses, um, people aren't going to come back right away. They're going to make sure they're going to, almost like they're going in the water, they're going to put their, their toe in and maybe go up to their ankle and maybe up to their knee. Until, and once they're, it's going to take a little while for, for them. And I, let's face it, we try to make this point with the governor's office that uh, it, it's really, I mean, the business's reputation, obviously, you know, depends upon, the confidence between the customer, the employee, and the employer. And uh, we do know it's, it's going to take a while before you even get anywhere near the kind of 
normal capacity that you would have, but the sooner we get going, the more confidence it will be to people. And it's interesting. I think uh, uh, Governor Cuomo just announced that they're getting more cases um, from uh, the coronavirus for people that weren't commuting that are, that have now been shut inside their houses. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a, it, it, quite frankly, there's a lot of unintended consequences of not getting back to normal life. Now, it's not going to be normal. We know we're going to have to have, you know, the social distancing, the masks, the gloves and stuff, but we got to get back to normal. we got to get back to some sense of normal, and the sooner the better. Mary Senator. Lou? Yeah. Uh, Mary Lou, hi. How it, thank you so much for putting this together. I was having technical difficulties. I don't know if you can hear me. I was, listening I was listening to you guys on the phone, uh, but something that I do want to tell you, uh, some of the concern that had been raised by uh, President Sweeney and Senator Orojo, I have other concerns. People are contacting me and they saying they're going to start opening. Uh, when they start opening, what are they going to do with childcare? So we got to have a plan of how we're going to bring everybody back to work knowing that they have a place to send the kids that are going to be safe. So we are going to be facing a whole bunch of challenges, and everybody should be already working on a plan. When this happens, how are we going to do it, and how are we going to bring everybody back to work? Uh, some of the concerns, I had meetings with people, uh, the uh, malls that have restaurants inside the malls, and other places that are saying, we don't know, I say, start working on a plan, work with all the industry, and put a plan together and send it to us so we can have a better understanding how we can help. We will open, but the point will be, when we open, how are we going to do it? Is it going to be safe? And it's too much. You, um, I'm going to be talking to Teresa Ruiz, and I have to jump and join the pre-call for the budget um, um, pre-conference today. But uh, I want to say something. We need to be looking at not just opening the restaurants and the industry. is thinking about what's going to happen to the kids, to, to the parents who have children. Because this is the concern that I'm getting every day in my offices. When the, my employers already start thinking ways to reopen, but the schools are closed and there's no child care. What are we going to do? So those are the things that we have to, to think about as well. But thank you so much. Uh, I have to get off the phone. God bless you, everybody. Stay safe. President uh, Sweeney, thank you so much uh, for everything and your leadership. Uh, and I will be talking to you guys later. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Senator. You know, I, I mean, I think that that kind of wraps up a lot of the questions. And if we did miss something, I will go back and forward the questions on to the offices. Um, but Senator, I'm sorry, um, Senator Cruz Perez, we did submit um, a plan we, uh, the, for uh, restaurants, hotels, amusement parks, uh, venues, wedding and banquet venues, and actually the bowling alley guys just, um, they want a plan too. So <laughs> everyone, you know, what we want to do is give you all a pathway to show that we can do it. Uh, and this industry, you know, certainly there's going to be challenges, but to the Senate president's point, we have to start today to get where we go to, because the financial reality is, especially our seasonal businesses, they make 80% of their income between Memorial Day and Labor Day. And you just don't get those weeks back. Um, a concern that it was raised by a friend of mine who owns a restaurant in Camden City was uh, cleaning supplies. Yes. Uh, Is that something you guys are working together as a, as a team? Because he say he's having a hard time and he's, he's allowing people to come and pick up fruit in his restaurant. And he say, when I'm reopening, I don't know if I'm going to have enough cleaning supplies. So what are we doing? Yeah, so the proper PPE like masks and gloves and cleaning supplies, we have had actually vendors from all over reach out to us um, to partner with us, obviously Echo Lab and, and some of our normal vendors, but you know, we're looking to make sure because in our plan, uh, any public facing employee would have a mask on during phase two. It does not make sense to have, and it's dangerous for kitchen staff to have masks on. Um, that's potentially hazardous to them. And, you know, I know that it was talked about that the governor had said something about taking um, guest temperatures and doing saliva checks. That's a violation of HIPAA. It's, you know, and honestly, you walk into a restaurant, you're not going to let an 18 year old hostess take your temperature or, or conduct a saliva test. And that's not sanitary. So that's why we really, in these plans, we feel that this is the best roadmap to reopening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.
Senators, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll certainly continue to have a conversation and I'll pass along all the information. But I just really, again, I'm, I'm asking you, plead, pleading with you that, you know, more than once was I in tears over, and I'm going to get upset again, over the last seven weeks, because I see that this industry that does so much for its communities, donates to every organization, employees, you know, that in the community, right, we don't know our outsource them, are desperately hurting. And this is not a time for divisiveness. This is a time to see how do we help the small business community in this state. And honestly, whatever you can do, out of the box thinking, being receptive to some of our ideas, you know, I, I really, I'm gonna ask you for that because um, this is the most challenging moment that I think the hospitality industry has ever seen and we need everybody's help. Mary Lou, I, I agree. And I also wanna give you some advice you gave plans. Yes. Push for response back. Keep keep your voices heard. I just saw the governor extend it for another thirty days. Uh, didn't say that um, it's it's going to have to be that way. But Mary Lou, we have to. It just can't be Steve Sweeney, Steve Orhel, and a couple other senators. As organizations, as groups, you're going to have to have your voices heard. Because submitting plans, yep. okay, what do you like about my plan? What do you not like about my plan? Give me criticism, give me guidance, but then let me open up again. You know, Mary Lou, and, and I'm telling you, right now, it has to be more voices than just ours. Listen, and I'm not saying we're flipping a switch, because it's not no way possible. To, I don't think it's safe to do what Georgia did. But I think given guidance and given, given organizations like yours, like you're going to open in 10 days, you know, we're going to open this day, is critically important. And I can tell you, it's not going to happen if you guys sit back just without getting response back from your plans. Thank I can you. tell you that right now. And I, tell, I, I can't agree more. The Senate President 100% right. Um, I'm going to be putting out a, you know, a press release saying, let's, let's rely on the industry plans. I mean, you look at them, I've looked at all four of your plans. They're extremely responsible. You know, you're going to have a challenge that you know, customers aren't going to necessarily come, going to come back right away, but it, Senator Sweeney is 100% right. Um, we, I have a call with the governor, uh, governor's office today at, at three o'clock with Senator Sarlo and Senator Ruiz and. Senator Singleton, and we'll keep, uh, Senator O'Scanlon as well, we'll keep pushing for that. But we really, they really need to hear from uh, your, all your members and, uh, and that, that coalition. Because you look at the plans, they're there. So let's, let's rely upon the industry. The people actually have a lot of, you know, um, money invested and time and everything. So we really have, they, they really have to hear from, they really have to hear from you. And we and we got to keep up the pressure. We're doing it, but they got to hear from more people. Yeah, we're going to be doing a call to action for all of our members to reach out Good. to the governor's office. So thank you for your advice, um, and uh, we will we will be on that. So thank you again for your time, and you know, stay safe. I look forward to working with all of you in the future. You too. Take care. Thank you.